and want in terms of the athleticism. He's got good size. He has the ability to flip his hips and run. But uh, for whatever reason, throughout his entire tenure in Buffalo as a cornerback, he just never put it all together. And when the ball was in the air, that's when everything just kind of went haywire for McKelvin. So uh, the, the reason why he kind of lost his job uh, when, when he was injured at the start of the year to Ronald Darby was a couple of reasons. One, Darby played really, really well. And two, because McKelvin did not play well in 2014. And that, that, really, that mindset was stuck in their mind. So I think with McKelvin, he, uh, he's back with Jim Schwartz, which is good because Schwartz knows exactly what he's all about. But uh, there will be so- flashes of brilliance with him and times where you just scratch your head and go, what the heck was he doing on that play? Why didn't he put his arms up? Why didn't he jump at the ball? So there, there's a uh, the the deal that they got him for is probably a good one. Um, he'll push to start a, in that outside cornerback role. He's not a nickel or anything like that. You just mentioned Jim Schwartz. He had his best year playing for Schwartz, uh, and I guess that's you know maybe what brought him to Philadelphia. And it seems like a lot of these Bills players. Nigel's another one. Nigel Bradham, the linebacker, he certainly had a better year playing for Schwartz than he did last year. Correct? Oh yeah. I mean. Uh, Nigel has been in the league for four years, and he's had two really good years. And just for Bills history, because I'm, I'm sure not a lot of uh, Eagles Eagles fans are keeping up on the defensive scheme of the Bills from one year to the next. Uh, his rookie season, the Bills played a 4-3 defense. His second season, they played a 3-4. Third season, they played a 4-3. Fourth season, they played a 3-4. His best two seasons were when he was in a 4-3 defense. And his best season by far was when he was with Jim Schwartz, because Schwartz knew exactly how to use him. He didn't put too much on his plate from a coverage perspective. He put the, put him at weak side linebacker. And I know some people are scratching their heads and, and saying, hey, why didn't the Eagles keep Kiko Alonso when he was uh, when he was in Buffalo while Jim Schwartz was? But that's because a guy like Braddon is out there who's actually a better fit for Schwartz's style of defense and what he wants out of a weak side linebacker. So I think that fit is tremendous. I think what it, uh, I mean, don't you can look at McKelvin all you want as an impact player, but – uh, I think Bradham could end up being a gem for the Eagles when he goes back into Schwartz's defense. I, I, I feel very strongly about the talent and the skill set that he has and the fact that the fit in Buffalo just wasn't there last year. Yeah, and, and you know, I wonder, because Jim Schwartz didn't leave really on his own volition, I guess he kind of just didn't feel like he had a role there anymore, how uh, much of an impact did he have on that defense and how much – uh, did he change the defense just basically by bringing his scheme and ideas in here? Yeah, he. I mean, they they certainly had a great attack to get after the get after the opposing offense. I mean, they were fourth in defense that that year, I believe. Um, but in getting after the passer, the Bills did a pretty darn good job of it the, the year before that when Mike Patton was their defensive coordinator too. So Schwartz just kind of brought it all together. He al- they also had some key assistants for them, like um, uh, uh, at, at with the defensive backs. Donnie Henderson was coaching them up, so that that really helped things. And, and Schwartz just kind of over uh, was overseeing the entire operation as opposed to really being hands on with one one place or the other. He, he had he had a good mentality for it. He put that defensive line in, in a in the right spot because. All they wanted to do is get after the passer, and he runs a very basic 4-3 uh, with a wide nine technique for the defensive ends and says, all right, you four, go get the passer. The back seven, worry about uh, worry about the coverage side of it. Occasionally we'll throw a, a blitzing linebacker or a blitzing corner, but not all that often. Uh, we're, you know, we're looking at all these Bills players that possibly be coming here, and a lot of people are excited for Jim Schwartz. Uh, being the defensive coordinator, they really feel that that could uh, make the Eagles a, a better defense. You mentioned McKelvin, and of course, uh, Nigel Bradham is a name that has met with the Eagles. He has not signed with the Eagles yet. Uh, Mario Williams, he signed with Washington, and some people thought that Schwartz you know, and him could reunite, but it just didn't seem to be a fit. He goes to Miami today, Joe. Do you think that's a good fit for the Dolphins? Does he still have anything left in the tank, or is he another guy that was kind of miscast in that Rex Ryan defense? Well, he was miscast in Rex Ryan's defense, but he also didn't do himself any favors by, you know, publicly criticizing Rex Ryan's defense by my count four separate times. I mean, that's that's just not the way Rex Ryan and his crew really want things to go down. And um, they they were kind of 
uh, kowtowing to it a little bit because um, they were they were trying to do a hybrid four three three four based off some of the concepts Schwartz did uh, in 2014 and just never worked. It never got put together. Uh, Mario's back to a, a more a proper four three defense, so you know he has the opportunity to have a, a better statistical season, but. Uh, I just, I just, if if I'm Miami and I'm looking at Mar- keeping Mario Williams or, or Olivier Vernon, I'm picking Olivier Vernon every time, uh, just because I think he is a far superior pass rusher. And you know, with Williams, you don't really know what you're going to get from an effort perspective from one game to the next. I mean, I kid you not, and you guys might remember this. Uh, it was made more of a big deal in Buffalo than I'm sure it was in Philadelphia. But on a rather innocuous uh, throw to the flat against the Eagles. Uh, Williams came free, uh, and Darren Sproul stepped up to, to protect Bradford on the blitz pickup. And rather than jumping up and trying to slot down the pass, which was going to the flat area, or trying to bowl Sproles over and get to Bradford, what does Williams do? He bends over, essentially a foot down, to engage with Darren Sproul. <laughs> and that's just, a, that's just one major example of the kind of effort that we saw at times uh, from Mario last year. Joe Viscalia with us. He covers the Buffalo Bills, and uh, we're learning more about Leotis McKelvin down here in Eagles country, but one player Eagles fans do know about is LaShawn McCoy, so we'll find out from you. Is there a concern up there that he's going to miss time? Uh, what are people's thoughts on LaShawn McCoy right now? Yeah, there, there is concern um, because, you know, even if he doesn't end up getting charged, there's still that, that video out there. And the NFL, as we've all seen before, is its own governing body at times. So they, they will associate some punishment to, to what they view as a crime or maybe putting the NFL in a bad light. So, yeah, there's some concern in that building. There, absolutely, there has to be. And uh, no matter how long it is, whether it's one game, two games, four games, six games, whatever, uh, and the Bills have to have a contingency plan in place. We saw them release Booby Dixon, uh, who is their third-string runner. They have Carlos Williams, their, their standout rookie runner from last year, and uh, a, a younger guy, Mike Gillisley. I, I think they do want to add somebody through free agency, maybe a guy like Bilal Powell, to, to bring him in, just because they don't know what's going to happen with McCoy. And it's still a holding pattern uh, with the Philadelphia DA and uh, you know what, what exactly is going to end up coming to pass with that situation. But... Uh, the Bills, I mean, the Bills have to think about it. They're, uh, they have to operate that way because free agency is knocking on the doorstep quite literally. Joe, we're here uh, near Atlantic City in the heart of South Jersey. That's Greg Roman country, the Bills offensive yeah. coordinator. What, what do people think of his performance so far in calling offensive plays and working with Rex Ryan? I'll tell you what, he was one of the most unheralded offensive coordinators in the league last year. And uh, to do what he did with that offense with – how little they did from an offensive perspective the two years prior. I mean, of course, it helped things a lot by signing Tyrod Taylor and not having E.J. Manuel start any game, well, start uh, more than two games last year. We saw what happened in Jacksonville when he imploded in the second quarter and turned the ball over three times in four minutes. But um, it, what we saw was Taylor and being a nice little fit for what Roman did. And he never put too much on his plate. He ran the ball over 55% of the time uh, from one game to the next. And and they never made Taylor have to be uncomfortable in the pocket. Now the next step is to get Taylor a little bit more comfortable with seeing the entire field, seeing the middle of the field, and go from there. But, I mean, they put up some pretty good offensive numbers last year from a rushing perspective. They got Sammy Watkins, the ball, uh, quite a bit near the end of the year last year once he was fully healthy. So uh, I like the job that Greg Roman did. The offensive line, for, for the most part, played really well. And so now it's a matter of getting Taylor and company to kind of advance, progress, because uh, they need that in use and with the defense picking it up a little bit. And if they do, they have a sniff at the playoffs, but uh, they need to make sure that teams aren't figuring out Tyrod Taylor's secret formula by any means. Well, it seems like we got a little uh, insight on Leotis McKelvin's uh, personality. He was just asked about his interception in the game <laughs> against the Eagles, and he said they kept running the same play. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, Leotis McKelvin, I mean, I've been covering Bills full-time since 2009, and for my money, the biggest character I've ever come across is Leotis McKelvin, and that's considering, <laughs> that's considering Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, they're – 
there was, I'll give you a little story. There was one day, um, they come back in from practice, and Leotis McKelvin is wearing like a, a full body onesie. Uh, he practiced <laughs> in it. And I go, Leotis, what the hell are you wearing? And he goes, man, it's my forever lazy. I'm like, oh, God. It had like the, the trap door on the back and everything. I'm like, this, this guy is insane. But he is, uh, he's just an absolute character. You know, it, it's, it's hard not to root for a guy like that because he's good with the media. He, uh, he, he gets that side of it. But he just never has gotten the full, uh, the full amount of how to be a successful NFL cornerback. You'll see bits and pieces of it. But by, by no stretch of the imagination is he a lockdown uh, starting quarterback, absolutely. Very Dominic rogers Cromarty, it seems like. Uh, scratch your head sometimes yeah. and say, man, did you see that play he just made? Uh, Joe Biscaglia from uh, WKBW-TV in Buffalo, longtime Bills reporter, uh, giving us some insight on uh, some of the Bills players, one in Philly, one that could be on the radar here on the Sports Best. Thanks, Joe. All right, thanks, guys. Anytime you need me.